Okay, so again, this is Mark Burnett, our last speaker uh, for today. Uh, he is the author of the very acclaimed book, Perfect Passwords. I was actually considering to bring it here to Las Vegas to have it personally signed. I still have it at home, Mark. Uh, and uh, again, uh, Mark came with this talk. Uh, have, you, have you actually been tormenting your family over this? Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. So I think it's going to be very uh, <coughs> interesting to listen what you have actually been do doing. So, Mark, feel free to get started. All right. Okay. Um, I'm Mark Burnett. I guess. Hi, Mark. <laughs> I, I do stuff and I talk about stuff. So, But on my first slide here, I'm going to read my intro. Okay, so this talk is about passwords and killing passwords and really the mess we've made with the whole passwords thing. Because although we like to think that we have played a part in making the world more secure, mostly what we've done is alienate users. We've made them log into everything over and over and over and over and over. We tell them to make sure the password is really strong, but don't write it down. And of course, don't forget it. Be sure to add some special characters, or sometimes, when it's a bank, don't include special characters. <laughs> Banks. Uh, we've bombarded users with, I gotta change my screen here. Um, the net, <laughs> we've bombarded users with a never ending supply of Policies, CAPTCHAs, Remember Me boxes. Well, I'm behind now. And of course, you don't check the Remember Me box, even though it is everywhere. And of course, users retaliated how they know best with memes. And you know, we can't blame them because we created them. We recreated those monsters, and they are monsters. But I have got this little analogy here. Actually, I just saw this video and I thought it's got to find a way to work it in. <laughs> we are all losing. Okay, now I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if you notice it, it, it's kind of quick, but um, I, I, watch around this area. I'm going to zoom in and, and slow it down, but watch around this area because. There was something that just kind of went viral quick there. <laughs> yeah, you probably missed it on the first time, so. All right, so we've been doing passwords for several decades now, and you think we've, we've pretty much got it figured out, right? But, but let's, let's look at what we've accomplished, and let's, let's kind of do a report card here. Password policies. Seemed like a good idea, but you know, it turns out we, we really don't know what works. I mean, users have bad passwords, so hey, let's force them to have good passwords, but that kind of ended up with not enough requirements, too many requirements, strange requirements, no, no two identical consecutive characters, and I don't know if you, if you know me on Twitter, I complain about a lot of stuff. Short password explanation, policies for policies. I mean, come on. Failed. Um, user education, you know, they're still confused. We've, as much as we've, we've tried, they're, they still suck at passwords. They still hate passwords. They still want to kill passwords. They're always trying to find some, some way to work around their passwords. So we're going to fail on that, too. Password managers, hey, now uh, I know we've talked a lot about password managers and it's kind of an important thing to a lot of people here, a lot of person here. Um, <laughs> but you know, we've got to face it, they're just a temporary fix. They're really not a long-term solution. They kind of tacking on to, tacking on to this problem we have of passwords and we're trying to fix passwords by having password manager. But, um, Yeah. Hardware tokens, hey, now, hardware tokens we've been doing for decades now. I mean, 
we've been trying to get it right, and we've, we've tried a lot of different things, but the thing is, have you ever tried to get someone to use a hardware token who isn't in the security business? <laughs> or unless, the, you know, the company forces them to, you know? It just doesn't happen. And then there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, biometrics, hey, users like those. Fingerprints, eye scanners, voice matching. You know, movies have been doing it for years. It looks cool. It seems really secure. I mean, you got to, if, I mean, if it's something really secure, they're going to voice match, right? Um, but, you know, we still haven't figured out how to make it, we really haven't made, figured out how to make it secure, and we haven't figured out how to make it anonymous, and we haven't figured out how to make it work everywhere. Your fingerprints YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't have sound. I just realized. The has cool. Okay. It sounded like that kind of. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So the way this started is Intel, this, this particular topic started, Intel had me write an article a few months ago, and and they've seen they've seen a lot of my tweets and stuff, and they thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we got we wrote an article about killing passwords, and, and they thought, you know, let's get a bunch of equipment, let's, let's, let's try it out on my family, you know, and kill passwords, see, if, see what really works, and yeah, that didn't go so well. But um, I, I got, a, I got a, um, some wearables stuff, some, some Yubi keys, I had a bunch of those laying around. Uh, uh, eye scanner, <laughs> uh, fingerprint scanner, and a password manager, I'd used Intel's true key in this one. I mean, the experiment was really fun for me. But, um, you know, I, I did it for a few weeks. I got all my, I got all these things hooked up, you know. I got everyone in my family hooked up. I got, you know, I had this interesting, I, we have this pretty diverse thing in my family. I got my, I my wife, you know, well, I, that's another story. My three of my boys, I got four, um, and my father-in-law, Oh, especially, I, especially my father-in-law. I'll just let you guys just, I don't know if you can see those, but. You gotta read some of them. My father-in-law put tape over his webcam, transparent scotch tape. <laughs> I'm amazed at, despite my best efforts, my father-in-law's ability to fill his computer with every spyware known to man. My father-in-law today told me he needs to get a copy of Harvard Graphics. Then I realized he was serious. <laughs> I'm just going to say the world is not secure until my father-in-law can go 90 days without getting some kind of infection on his laptop. No, every hack today wasn't because of the passwords I released. Seriously, people are like my father-in-law. Okay. My SSID used to be not found my home group blocked and my Plex server broken. My father complains that nothing works at my house. So, well, I, I have so many stories. What's that? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I've got a pretty diverse uh, group to pull from. Needless to say, my father-in-law got the cat book, which is, you know, password manager, uh, cats, hey. Password manager disguises a book about cats. No, anyway, it's really interesting, though, because I got, I got this stuff. I mean, I got this you know, I got one of my sons to use YubiKeys. I, it's kind of a hack, but I, I got him to, you know, use them for all those different passwords. Um, some of them were static, statically uh, hard-coded passwords, but, you know, the whole thing was to kill passwords at that point. My wife, I got her this, uh, you know, this uh, fitness tracker. And um, the thing is, though, you know, once she found out that it was worth, how much it was worth, she wanted to sell on eBay. So that didn't last. Um, the, you know, I mean, it was just like, I, I, it lasts about three weeks, and then, you know, I, you see, I, I, it all ended up back in, on my keychain again. They just kind of, they just kind of gave up on it. But why can't we get people to, to use this stuff? I mean, why is it so hard? I mean, I couldn't even get my own family to do it, and I would think I'd like to have some kind of influence over them. I mean, what do we need to do to get user participation here? Wait, oh, hey, let's just do them all. Okay, so, it's gotta be usable. I mean, it's, it, it's, if it's not usable, I mean, obviously it's gotta be usable, but 
you know, it's got to it's got to have um, it's got to be easy to install. It's got to be it can't have a lot of terminology, you know, crypto terminology. It can't be uh, frustrating to the, oh yeah, see, that's the thing with my wife. She gets really frustrated with stuff. So if it doesn't work, like the first two times, she's ready to give up on it. So it's, it can't be frustrating. Um, needs to be flexible. Needs to work across a lot of different platforms. Now we get, there's a lot of cool authentication stuff, but it only works on Windows or it only works on your mobile. So you know, it's gotta work on different platforms. It's gotta be compatible with a lot of different authentication technologies. I mean. Windows Hello is nice, but it, there's a lot of stuff you can't use it. You can't use a YubiKey to, to log into Windows Hello. Um, it's got uh, to be invisible to the user. And you know, it, they, they just really got to feel like they're not even using it. I mean, that's, that's the biggest problem with passwords. They're, they're far from invisible. They, they're, they're struggling with them all the time. I mean, just just monitor the, the, the keyword password on, on Twitter and you see all this, it's kind of funny, but you see all kinds of complaints about passwords. Um, and it's gotta be ubiquitous. I mean, if your bank sen uh, sends you one token that only works with their, with their website, I mean, what's the point of that? It's gotta be something that you can, you can use on all the different websites or all the different systems or, or if it only works on websites but not the OS or vice versa. I mean, it's gotta be something that, that works across different systems. So with this in mind, you know, I, I decided to take it to the extreme. Okay, it didn't work with my family, but I thought I'd, I'd try it myself. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty brave. So I, I got all this stuff together. I got a few more things in my keychain. I got this, you know, there's that, the, the eye, eye tracker. And, um, you know, I, I installed it all in my system. My system really doesn't boot very well anymore. But, <laughs> um, but I, I installed it all, you know, and it... it, it um, you know, I tried it out. It's like, what, you know, what, what are we doing wrong here? I mean, what am I, why is this so hard to figure out? And just to be clear, we aren't going to be killing passwords anytime soon. You guys know that. I'm just going to skip that one. So let's talk about password managers. I said they were a temporary fix. They're, they're just kind of a crutch to get us through to make passwords usable for now. I mean, it may be 10 years, maybe 20 years, but they're really not going to last. It's, it's not a long-term solution here. Um, I mean, we don't know our own secrets. I mean, we, we create these, these we, we don't even create the secrets. It the, the, the generates the passwords for us. It manages the, the secrets for us. It enters them in for us. But it's not, it just kind of breaks the whole security model. It breaks the whole concept of having a secret because, yeah, we have this, this master password, but that's not really the way this is going to work. Um, and we just got to look at that. Look at passwords. They're, they're a transition. They're there to get us to this place where we can, you know, we truly have a seamless system where, where you know, we're doing more than just typing in static passwords. You know, a tool is type, typing in static passwords for us. Uh, sorry. But to get, that, to get to that place, we're going to have to get operating system support. We're gonna to have to get browser support. And I know that, where's my question? Yeah, yeah. He, he thinks that browsers shouldn't be involved, but you know, you gotta have the operating system. You gotta have the OS. It's gotta be, have a trusted platform to run the browser, and the browser's gotta have that trust authentication platform to log into your websites. And if we don't have the browser involved, if we don't have the operating system involved, we're just not gonna to get to that. I mean, it's just, we have to, the only way we're gonna do that is to get every component integrated. And so who's gonna do that? No, I'm serious. Who's going to do that? I'm asking for volunteers. No? Uh, okay. So what you have, and we've been doing this for a long time. We've, got, we've, we've tried magnetic stripe cards. We've tried smart cards, token generators, all kinds of technologies. And that's what users want. They want something that's easy, something you just plug in or, or you just be near your computer, unlocks it. Um, if, it, if you lose it, you, you've got this thing to log in. If you lose it, you grab another thing, and that's your thing. And, and you lose it to log in, and you lose that thing, and you get another thing. So, you know, that that's, that's, seems like a great solution, but, you know, hardware is the, the classic trade off between. Hardware is the classic trade off between security and convenience. And, you know, what, what seems great for users really doesn't work well for security, so, and vice versa. But, You missed that. Let me do that again for you. 
So around 2005, uh, a lot of websites realized they needed to do, um, they needed to make things more secure. So we started you know, like PayPal and eBay and some banks. They started distributing these these uh, Vasco Go tokens. You know, you push the button, it gives you six-digit code. And actually, I really like these. I mean, I, I've had these for 10 years, and the battery still works. I still use them on my PayPal account, but I guess they really kind of sucked for the for the companies because they just, you know, they kind of. It got to where they, PayPal just kind of hid that, that feature for a while. Um, it must have been a major uh, sport headache. So we kind of, what's that? Exactly. Nobody used them but me and like you probably and like some other guy. So Bluetooth. Now, now Bluetooth is interesting because you know, people are always trying to, I mean, Bluetooth seems like the perfect way to do this. You know, you don't even have to touch it. Just go near your computer. It unlocks it. But it's not exactly secure. I mean, you, it's always on. You know, it's easily spoofable. It's visible, I mean, within 30 feet or more if you have a, if you have a um, I mean, it's, sometimes I've seen people do up to 100 feet uh, with a right antenna. Um, vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. I think there's going to be a talk at DEF CON about that. But we keep, you know, we keep, everyone keeps going back to this, these, uh, Bluetooth stuff, and the protocol is insecure. There's just really no fixing that unless, unless we fix the protocol. But one thing you do is you treat it like it's an insecure network, and we know how to deal with insecure networks. I mean, you, you have proper key exchange. You have um, certificates. You can have uh, PIN certificates. You, you don't just detect the presence of, of, a, of a, the, the Bluetooth MAC address. You, you, know, you, you exchange, you do a proper uh, challenge response, you exchange a time-based, or digitally signed time-based uh, token. But no one does that, that's a problem. Uh, I, I, this, this, this tracker I use for my wife, uh, what I, I just end up using some software, in fact, I, there we go. I have used some software, uh, this Rohos. It's kind of cool, you, you have all these different things, you've got USB flash drive, Bluetooth, Bluetooth key, PKCS number, uh, 11 security module, YubiKeys, uh, you can plug in all these things and it, you can log in with Windows. Uh, really nice, I did that with my wife, integrated it with a couple other things, Tasker and some stuff on her, on her um, uh, phone and you know, it worked good until, like I said, eBay, you know. My wife, okay, you know, I'm not gonna go on that. You, 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 you know all the stories about my wife and eBay, yeah. Um, it's not nailed down, it's going on eBay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I used to have these DEF CON badges, you know, like from five and six, but you know, those go for a lot of money on eBay, it turns out. <laughs> uh, so, uh, try, uh, these fitness trackers are actually kind of cool because you think about it, they've got, first of all, it's something you have, you know, you've got possession there, but you also got GPS on some of them. You've got biometric markers. I mean, this one's got a heart rate sensor, you know, and they, they, it's just done uh, authentication through heart rate. It's got microphones on it. You could do voice authentication. It's got galvanic sensors. You know, it's, I mean, basically you've got a lie detector test on here um, on a watch. But I mean, there's, there's a lot of different uh, possibilities. I mean, you could, you could, if you really wanted to make that work, I mean, um, wearables are a really interesting thing. And, and it was, you know, it's, it's pretty transparent. Uh, Microsoft tried to do, uh, do it with their, um, their thing. What's it called? What's their wearable called? Band, yeah, there we go, band. Um, and, you know, it's just basically if you push a button. Gatekeeper, now this one's kind of interesting. I actually kind of like this one. It's this little thing right here. You get a USB dongle, and then you just put on your keychain. You walk up your computer, and it's really accurate. Like, you can say uh, how far you want it to be from your, from your computer. You can say, like, three feet or five feet or 15 feet, and it's really, I mean, you get within three feet, and it, it you know, it locks, and when you walk away, it unlocks, or other way around. Um, you can choose how you want to log in, if you want to log in with just the gatekeeper or, or with uh, a pin or whatever. And it's just really cool. I really actually kind of had fun with that one. But then I saw this thing. It says, enter your Windows password, enter, enter your Windows password below. This enables you to log in your, to your PC. Whenever someone asks for your Windows password, you know that's a bad sign when, when, when authentication. So I saw this, and I saw this, and it was just bad. I mean, I don't know if you can see here, my, my pin. Yeah. 
you know, and the <laughs> encrypted, you know, and there's the all the code for encrypting it. And yeah, it was just bad. I mean, it was kind of sad because that was kind of cool. Anyway, I've worked with them. We've been working with them, and they're 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 improving that. But it's you know, that's, it's, that, there's a lot of potential there. There's some some way we can go with that. You know, some Bluetooth device that's pretty seamless for the user. YubiKeys, right? I mean, we all like YubiKeys. How many people here have a YubiKey? <laughs> all right. How many people have four YubiKeys? <laughs> One, two, three. What's that? On which one? The four, oh. Well, it's, it depends on how, I mean, what kind of crypto you're talking about. Because there are, I mean, the, the U key is writable, uh, and you can, you can put in, you, you can write your own Java modules in there. Um, so I guess it depends on what you're using it for. But, you know, it's, it depends on how you're, how you're using it. Um, and I, I, think, I think the U key is probably the closest to, to getting a real hardware token that's usable. It's cheap, U2, U2F standard, I got a few of those U2F tokens. This one here, it just kind of folds out and tapes over and I got it for $5 on Amazon. Widespread adoption, a lot of people, well, I should say widespread adoption among us. Um, <laughs> really easy to use, you know, put it in, push a button. Uh, it's, the, it's got the, the YubiKey itself, it's got the OTP, smart card, channel response, other stuff. But we still can't get people to use them. I mean, I gave my son three YubiKeys for all those different, you know, six different passwords because, you know, it's about all he had. I still couldn't even get him to use them for that. Um, I have my, one of my sons, I, my 10-year-old, he actually still uses his YubiKey, yeah, you know, to log into. He's the only one of all my family who actually uh, survived the whole thing. He uses his uh, YubiKey to log into Gmail. But, but we can't get people to use them. I mean, that's about as easy as you can get, right? NFC RFID. Got a ring here. It's got two little NFC tags on it. And oh, hey, I got on the back of my back of my I got a, another NFC tag. Back of my wallet, I got NFC tag, so I can yeah swipe my wallet. And in the bathroom, I can swipe and launch my apps I need on my phone. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, some some do. Yeah, the the Nano, I believe, or yeah. I think I don't know. One of those. RFID is cool. The RFID thing, you know. I mean, I, I mean, it's, I got these these little scanners I put on my my computer. Oh, I used to see my computer was such a mess, you know, all the stuff. I had a t stuff taped on there because I had a, you know. So I got an NFC and RFID, you know. So it's kind of cool. I I actually got another one for my garage, so I can open my garage door with that, and it worked quite great for that. But I don't. You know, the thing is, you can't change it. It's just a code. I mean, it's spoofable. It's easily copied. You can't turn it off, so it's not like like Bluetooth. I mean, at least Bluetooth, you can kind of secure it by only turning on when you need it. You need a reader. I've got, you know, those readers. But I don't even know what that is. Oh, so I used Event Ghost in Windows. I used uh, that Rojo thing. I used Tasker. And kind of got all the stuff integrated. And it worked out pretty well. I and mean, it's really cool, but it's just not secure at all. I mean, it might work for home users. And that, that, I, mean, I don't know. Just don't do this. <laughs> I mean, unless you got some foil gloves or something. Because, you know, once someone, I mean, it's, it's spoofed. I just, I just, it's, someone scans it, and you've lost it. And you've got to, like, what do you pull it out and put a new one in? I mean, you can't really change it. I mean, that's worse than your fingerprint. Mobile device, devices, some. Uh, some based on Google Auth. I mean, there's a lot of them. Some are proprietary. Some use algorithms. Some use push no uh, custom algorithms. Some use push notifications. Some use a combination of that. Those things. They're really common. They're easy to use. Everyone's got a, some kind of mobile device. Uh, people are, are more willing to protect it, and they're going to notice when it's gone. It's not going to be gone for long. Um, the problem is, it's, it's uh, they're vulnerable to remote attacks. So you could you could have some bad app that someone installs. They're they're slow to replace. I mean, you can't just go and get a new one. Um, on the plus side, there is a lot of support for Google Auth. I mean, I've, I've probably got 30, 40 on my 
uh, Google Authenticator, and it's just constantly growing. Um, so I, I'm not even going. That's you guys get that. So. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so that's, so that's what I call them. What can be chopped off? Um, I kind of ran out of graphics, so I started using <laughs> some stock photos. So I guess the thing is with uh, fingerprints, finger, oh, here's my fingerprint scanner. It's a little tiny one. The problem with fingerprints, and th this is the authentic, they had, a, they had a problem where they were storing the the password encrypt. See what the way that some of these things work is, and, and the reason why I said that was bad news when they a bad, a bad sign when they ask you for your password, they'll they'll encrypt your password, and then have some logic in the program that, that authenticates you. And if you pass authentication, then they decrypt your password and use that to log into Windows. Um, and so that just means that your password is stored somewhere, and most likely it's got a hard coded key somewhere, or it's based on your PIN. Um, I mean, it's really cool. It's built into Windows, you know. But the thing is, you can't log into a website with your fingerprint. I, you don't have, you know. There's not really much you can do with that. You just log into Windows, and that's about it. Or maybe your your and your mobile phone as well. Um, and oh, Iris. Now, irises are interesting. I like this one the best. That camera is just kind of weird. I think. Yeah, this was my personal favorite um, because it just worked really well. It was just really seamless. It's almost as, as it worked almost as well as the uh, the Bluetooth. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let me. Wow, oh, you can't. It says looking for you, making sure it's you, and it logs me in. So it's kind of it's kind of cool. Um, but man, those pictures, it's kind of freaky. <laughs> but you know, it's it's just it's, I mean, it's, if we could get this something like that to work, uh, um, I mean, like I said, we, we get the the OS support, we get the browser support, and then we get the application support. But the thing is, we're not going to walk in. I'm not going to log into any websites with this, so there's really not much. <laughs> I should have got a better picture, I guess. But uh, you know, there's really not much you can um, do with it other than just. I mean, oh, you can play asteroids. It's kind of cool. You can you you look at the asteroid and it, it blows it up. And some games, but it's not much you can do with it other than that. It's, I mean, it would be nice if uh, if we could get that more. Commonplace, but they aren't really cheap. It's about $180 for this. Um, there has been a cock up, so there are catering people waiting outside to take over the room. So I have to ask Mark to speak very five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Oh, you give it away. The interesting question is essentially, is the zombie still alive? That's, that's, that's my main concern, to be honest. Face, voice, fix, don't ask for passwords. If, if you ever do use a, like any kind of biometric or, or you know, alternative authentication, ask for your password. There's several of them that did that. Um, it's just that you know they're they're storing it somewhere. Uh, oh, and there's there's this thing. I mean, you've got like LastPass. You can use YubiKey, but if you lost lost your YubiKey device, click here to disable YubiKey, and then over here it says use uh, email verification instead. So it's I mean it's just kind of why not just email verification in the first place? I mean it's not, it, you're not any stronger than the, that weakest link there. So expanding modalities. Um, oh wait, I'll go back to fix. Fixing it is you start strong, work backwards. We, we you, you allow a lot of different um, allow support for a lot of different uh, types of authentication. Don't I mean these, these a lot of these uh, like LastPass for example. It lists you know these these certain uh, two-factor authentication things you can use. You know if 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 
they're not, you know, they're not gonna, obviously not going to be available on every device for, for every person. I mean, not everyone has fingerprints. I mean, you know, it's just you got to have flexibility based on where the user is, what kind of device they're using, um, where they're logging in from, and other factors that you know that could make it potentially suspicious. So you kind of take away, you know, is this suspicious? You kind of take the score away, then you add on uh, with the, the stronger authentication factors determined to get you back up to where you need to be, you know, to a certain score to. Uh, to pass them, um, and here's some kind of interesting things that you could look at: you know, where you where you, where you are, when are you there, where you were, which device you're using, who you know, who's with you. But now here's some you probably don't want to use: um, <laughs> something you forgot, something you lost. Anyway, something you ate, how you bleed. So I thought you guys might want to. You know, use that hashtag and kind of carry that on. But uh, rules-based authentication, uh, that's one thing I like to see. I, I like to see some kind of, I mean, with, uh, with like within Windows Hello, for example, you can log in with a fingerprint or with your face, or you can log in with a pin code or a password. But it would be nice to say, you know, I want to log in with three of these, three out of four. Or I want to say, you know, at these times I want to log in with three out of four. Or if I want to say if there's been more, you know, certain conditions. I mean, it would be nice to have a rules-based uh, setup that you can decide, that we could decide. Let, let us have five different ways to authenticate, and you have to have three of them. Uh, artificial intelligence, there's, there's a lot of potential there for, for understanding when to require multiple factors or, or, you know, three or four factors for authentication find devices. Um, some of the password managers do that already. Um, smarter wearables, that would be really cool. Okay, butter you, okay. And then there's this. That's it. I guess we're on a lot of questions. We have questions? Have time for questions while they're setting up? Uh, uh, I, th I was told they are really eager to get, get in here. But again, you know, Mark will be around, so please do ask him questions outside.